the Barsook. A spot-welded, hyper-recycled piece of objective scrap metal, the Barsook is only a proper submersible in the eyes of coalition tax regulators. This class of submarine is used to describe generations of dockyard patch jobs that are attempting to pass themselves off as a discontinued model of scout submarine. Arguably the most recent design to pass through Coalition dockyards, the Barsook was the brainchild of a fringe station engineer who was being targeted by separatist assassins and needed a way off of the Aphotic Plateau as fast as possible. With no time to await the arrival of a friendly submersible, the Barsook was the result of a week's worth of sleepless nights and was designed to be crewed by the engineer alone. While it did successfully carry them to the ridge, the vessel was denied docking access to the checkpoint station due to its unregistered construction. After a few hours of desperate pleading over the radio, the station master eventually relented. They had the vessel registered into coalition records on its arrival, sealing the fate of hundreds of rookie captains and cementing the Barsook's legacy as a plague on station dockyards. The design was quickly picked up by dozens of business-savvy dockyard heads for its criminally inexpensive cost, as the main body hull was designed to be cobbled together from standard scrap sheets, normally only able to be melted down as slag. A single dugong could, if used frugally, be used to produce almost three entire barsooks and still have a number of high-value systems left over for sale as salvage. While I'm going to attempt to deliver an accurate, average reading for performance, please keep in mind that almost no two Barsooks will perform identically due to their patchwork nature. Coming in at just shy of 30 meters in length and with a laughable cargo capacity of four standard containers, the Barsook is often considered a glorified shuttle. However, with a top speed of 16 kilometers per hour and a descent velocity of 13 kilometers per hour, the Barsook can actually be outperformed by most assault shuttles on the market. The average Barsook is actually equipped with a third generation anvil reactor due to a recall on this design by the Coalition. While the anvil is capable of outputting a potent 4200 kilowatts, this output is actually more than the submarine can consume outside of heavy combat scenarios, meaning junction box overloads and fires are a common occurrence. Finally, the armament is hardly consistent between Barsooks, but one can usually expect to find some mix of coil guns and pulse lasers affixed to the vessel's three hardpoints, located at the upper rear, lower rear, and bow of the submarine, respectively. Some models even include the ability to fire depth charges if a system could be squeezed into the manufacturing budget. While on paper the numbers look all rather appealing for the vessel's partially 3,999 mark price point, this is a flaw made by countless aspiring captains. As it is all comprised from recycled parts and systems, a Barsook is only as good as the sum of its components. Assuming you were lucky enough to get one made of entirely new components, it would only perform to the stock specifications. Most Barsooks, however, are pulled together from centuries worth of waste components and scrap hull pieces left over from the construction of larger vessels, and rarely perform to the supposed specifications. Horror stories from Barsook-equipped captains and crews are endless, with hundred reports of leaks, sealant breaks, constant electrical fires, and some Barsooks are even reported to be sold without sonar. The cheap, entirely custom design, however, has formed something of a tuner subculture around the Barsook, who use it as a platform to create heavily custom-engineered monstrosities that can perform daredevil maneuvering at breakneck speeds. While certainly interesting, this attitude has certainly not helped the number of Barsooks wreck sighted, nor has it reduced the fatality rating of its crews. In the end, the Barsook is the poster child of recycling and reclamation efforts made by Coalition salvage teams, but plagued by poor construction, inconsistent manufacturing, and stands testament to the old adage, buyer beware. <laughs>